What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. Today's lesson is going to be different. As you may know, in August and at Christmas, I make one video on the series I've been watching recently. And today I'm gonna talk about the TV shows that I've watched since last August. And I'm gonna recommend five movies as well. Are you ready? If so, Let's kick off. The first series on my list today is Emily in Paris. A year ago, I made a video recommending this series, the first season. If you want to know what this series is about, you can check out this lesson. You can find the pop-up link and also the link in the description box. So the second season dropped on Netflix on December 22nd and I've already watched it and I'm sure I'm gonna see it once again. I've seen the first season three times. I love this series for many reasons. It's fun, fresh, romantic, colorful and fashionable. Lily Collins is amazing and inspiring and the locations are mind-blowing. This time we travel to Central Bay. After watching this series, I want to travel to Paris more than ever and I hope I'll be able to do it in 2022. And now let's move on to my second recommendation, an astrological guide for broken hearts. This series is in line with Emily in Paris. Recently, I've become interested in astrology and this TV show just hit the spot. It's set in Turin, Italy. The main character, Alice, is also a young girl who is going through a rough patch. Everything seems to go wrong, but like Emily, she's a fighter. She's single and her new friend, who is an astrologer, helps her find love using astrological signs. He recommends dating guys whose zodiac signs are compatible with hers. And in the first season, they cover six signs. It made me think about whether astrological compatibility is a thing or it doesn't really matter when love knocks at your door. I felt identified with Alice. Funnily enough, she's a Libra like me. And when I was watching this series, I had a feeling as if the script had been written about me. I totally loved the first season. I think I watch it once again and I'm really looking forward to the second season. The series is based on the novel of the same name. If you love fun romantic comedies and like astrology and birth charts, this series is for you. Let's move on to my third recommendation, New Amsterdam on Netflix. I totally loved this series and I must say that I'm not into TV shows about hospitals. This one is about a public hospital in New York. I think the main reason why I fell in love with this series is its main character, Max. He fights against the American medical system and wants to make sure that it's available to anyone even though you don't have insurance. His catchphrase is, how can I help? This character is inspired by a real-life medical director. Max is a larger-than-life character. He wears different hats. He's a medical director and also a doctor. Plus, he is a loving husband, understanding boss and loyal friend. Max has a lot on his plate because on top of everything else, he has to fight against cancer. Throughout the episodes, you take to medical staff, see how their relationships evolve and how they help and support each other. And if you want to learn medical English vocabulary, this series is perfect for you. For now, there are two seasons available on Netflix, but there will be more. Number four, atypical. It's a beautiful dramedy that follows Sam, who is autistic. This TV show is about his emotional journey of self-discovery and search for love and independence. The series questions the term of normalcy 
and it shows that it's okay to be different and a misfit and that you should go for your dreams despite your handicaps and difficulties. We can also see that everything is much easier if you have a loving and supporting family by your side. If you want to see a different kind of series, a moving and touching one, but at the same time with a touch of humor, don't miss it. And last but not least, Dynasty. It's a reboot of the 80s soap opera. It follows a filthy rich family and sheds light on their conflicts, problems, fights, etc. It shows that the rich also cry. This series is nothing profound and it took me a while to get hooked on it. But I've watched the four seasons and I'm looking forward to watching a new one when it's available on Netflix. My favorite character is Fallen because she is funny, ambitious, a go-getter and she never gives up. It's a great series to improve your English because as the plot is very easy to follow, you can focus on vocabulary and you can learn lots of expressions and words. And English the use here is modern and fresh. And before we finish, I want to recommend five movies that I really like and I'm highly likely to watch again this Christmas. Number one, a musical, La La Land. And two, Game Night, it's a comedy. They are available on Netflix. And three more movies that you can find on Amazon. Number three, Knives Out. It's very similar to Agatha Christie movies. Number four, Yesterday. It's a feel-good movie that has to do with the Beatles. And number five, Where Did You Go, Bernadette? It's an inspiring movie about self-growth and overcoming obstacles. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this English bit and you like these series and movies. And if you have a recommendation for me in terms of movies and series, please let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you liked this lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits, and catch me on Instagram, where I teach English every day. It's been the last class in 2021. Happy 2022! Thank you for all your love and support, and see you next year. Ciao for now!